Okay, so in this video, we're going to find the least common denominator, right? Not in the, the figurative sense, but right, the, the mathematical sense. Um, and again, this is something some of you might have might have done before, but we might be doing it in a slightly different way than you're used to. Um, so by now we know how to simplify rational expressions. We know how to multiply them. We know how to divide them. So now we need to learn how to add and subtract rational expressions, right? So we're going to learn how to add and subtract fractions, right? And before we can do that, we have to be, you know, versed in finding the least common denominator, right? Which I'm going to, from now on, I'm just going to call the LCD, okay? So right, how do we find the least common denominator? Okay, so it's, it's just two steps, right? First step is to factor all denominators completely. And let me be very specific about this. You're factoring all the denominators completely. That means into a product of prime factors, right, with, with exponents. In other words, a product of powers of prime factors, a product of powers of prime factors. Right. And this is something you, you know how to do, right, from chapter six. All right, the, the second step is to multiply each prime factor that, that you see here on the list with the largest exponent, right? And the key here is the largest exponent, right? And so that product will be the least common denominator. Okay, so yes, what happens if you use the smallest exponent? Then you don't get the least common denominator. You get the greatest common factor, which you've had to do back in chapter six, but that's not what we're doing here. So make sure you know the difference between the greatest common factor, which uses the, the, the lowest or the smallest exponents, and the least common denominator, which uses the biggest or largest exponents. Okay, so I just want to make that clear. All right, so now let's do some examples. Okay, so for our first example, we want to find the least common denominator for these three fractions. We have 3 over 8, 5 over 12, and 11 over 45. Um, and typically we're just going to do two fractions, in this case three, so this might be a little more complicated. However, they just involve numbers, right? So these are fractions, which are also rational expressions, um, but they're very simple ones, right? Okay, so let's go through the process here. Step one, we want to factor all the denominators. Now these are just numbers, right? So when you factor eight, you just get two times four, and four is two times two, right? So 8 is going to be 2 to the power 3, right? 2 times 2 times 2, but we want to write them with powers of prime factors. Okay, uh, the number 12, well, is 3 times 4, right? 3 is prime, but 4 is 2 times 2, and the 2s are prime. So for 12, we have, let's see, 2 to the power 2 times 3. And if you prefer, 3 to the 1, we usually don't write the 1 here, but it doesn't hurt to write it, at least not in this case. And the number 45, right? So that's the third denominator. Um, it's uh, 5 times 9. That's one way to write it, right? Now 5 is prime, but 9 is not. 9 is 3 times 3, so 45 is going to be 3 to the power 2 times 5 to the power 1. Okay, so far? All right, so that's step one. We factored all three denominators into their powers of prime factors, right? Uh, product of powers of prime factors, right? So step two, now we can write down the LCD, if I can spell it, LCD, right? So from this list in step one, um, we're just going to write down the product of all the factors using the largest exponent. So let's start with the 2, right? We have 2 to the 2 and 2 to the 3, 
which number is bigger, two or three? Of course, three is, right? And then multiplied by three, we have a choice between a zero, uh, sorry, a one and a two. Well, two is bigger than one, so we're going to use the two. And then finally, the five, well, we don't have a choice. There's only one exponent, one, so one's the biggest exponent. Okay, so this is the least common denominator, right? In terms of its prime factors, it's two to the three times three to the two times five, or better yet, eight times nine times five. Eight times nine is 72, and 72 times five is uh, 360. Yep, 360. So that's the LCD. Right? The LCD, the least common denominator, out of these three fractions here, is 360. Okay? And that's all we had to do in this case. Right? Right. So we're not adding these, we're not subtracting them yet. Right? That comes later. Right? For now, we're just finding the least common denominator. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so we want to find the least common denominator, LCD, uh, these two fractions, we have 5a squared over 14x cubed y squared and 3b over 20xy to the fourth. So see if you can do that. Okay, so step one, uh, here are the two denominators. We have 14x cubed y squared and 20xy to the fourth. So the only thing we have to factor here are the coefficients, the numbers. 14, um, you can probably do that in your head, is just 2 times 7. So 2 to the 1 times 7 to the 1 times x to the 3 times y to the 2. Okay, 20 is, well, 2 times 10, right? 2 is prime. I forgot to circle the primes here. 7. Uh, but 10 is not prime. 10 is 2 times 5. So 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, or 2 squared times 5. And we still have the x to the 1, oops, 5 to the 1, x to the 1, y to the 4. Okay, so that's step 1. Step 2, uh, maybe I'll do it over here, is to write, just write down the LCD. All right, so let's see, we have a 2. But we have, again, we have a choice between an exponent of 1 or 2. Which one do we pick? Right? Remember, we pick the largest exponent, the bigger number. The bigger exponent here is the 2. Right? And then we have a 5. Well, the only exponent is 1, so if that's the only exponent, that's the biggest one, 5 to the 1. And then 7, also to the power 1. And then for the x, we have a choice between a 1 and a 3. So which one is bigger, 1 or 3? Three? 3, right? Um, for the y, we have a choice between a 2 and a 4. 4 is bigger, so we choose the 4. Okay, so the LCD will be 4 times 5, which is 20, and then 20 times 7, I think, is 140. So there's our least common denominator, 140 x cubed y to the fourth. Okay, so that's the least common denominator. And so if your answer was 2xy squared, then you're getting mixed up with the greatest common factor, right? That was way back in chapter six. So 2xy squared, right, you're using the, the smaller exponents, and if you use the smaller exponents, this becomes your greatest common factor, 2xy squared, which is, which is great, but that wasn't the question, right? The question was to find the least common denominator, so again, don't get confused with that and the greatest common factor, okay? So, yeah. Yeah, so 2xy squared is not the answer. The answer is 140 x cubed y to the fourth. All right. And if you're wondering, then, you know, why is it called the least common denominator? Um, so out of all the possible common denominators out of these two 
fractions, right? This one is the smallest, right? The 140 x cubed y to the fourth is the smallest common denominator. It has to be common to both fractions, right? That's the key here, right? Because we could also use a bigger number, like 280 x to the 3 y to the 5. This is a common denominator, but it is not the least common denominator, okay? So again, you can always use bigger exponents than the least common denominator, but you cannot use smaller ones because then it's not going to be common to both, right? In other words, we want both fractions to have the x cubed. So if we only use the x, then the x cubed won't work. It won't be common to both. Make sense? A little bit? All right, so we'll do, we'll do some more examples and you'll get the hang of it. It's, it's not that bad. Okay, so here's our third example. Uh, we want to find the least common denominator for these two fractions. We have 2x cubed over x plus 4 times x minus 1 squared and 5x squared over x plus 3 times x minus 1. All right, so let's just go on to step 1. Factor all the denominators, right, completely. And, well, luckily, that they did that for us, right? These are already factored. So let's just write them down. x plus 4 times x minus 1 squared is one of the denominators. And the other is x plus 3 times x minus 1, right? These are already factored. So they're making it easy for us. Factored, right? Okay, so... Step two, this is the, the key step here. What is the LCD? Well, we just write down all the factors, right? We have x plus four, we have x plus three, and we have an x minus one. But notice, one of the exponents is a one, right? And then the other exponent is a two. Which one do we choose, the one or the two, right? When we're finding the least common denominator, we choose the bigger exponent, the two. So this is x minus 1 squared. So that's our LCD. x plus 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 squared. And these are just, you know, three distinct factors. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. Um, so if you wrote x minus 1 squared first, and then x plus 3, and then x plus 4, right? It's just that product. So order doesn't matter. Either way is fine, right? Again, if you're thinking that it was just x minus 1, right, because that's the only thing that's common to both of these, uh, the x minus 1 is the greatest common factor, not the least common denominator. Okay, so don't, don't get them mixed up. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, so... Our next example, again, we want to find the least common denominator, the LCD, for these two fractions, 3x minus 5 over x squared plus 2x minus 15, and x plus 7 over x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 12x squared. Okay, you got it? So step one, uh, we have to factor both denominators, right? Remember, th this has nothing to do with the numerators. So, right, if you remember in the previous examples, right, we just ignored the numerators. Um, obviously, I, I don't want to cross them out because they might be used later, but not in terms of just finding the least common denominator, right? So we have to factor, oops, x squared plus 2x minus 15, right, which is not prime. So it's, it's unlike the previous example where we didn't need to factor. They were, the factors were given to us. Here we have to factor, right? So this is a trinomial. The GCF is 1. And we need two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to positive 2. So after a moment of thought, you should end up with 5 and negative 3, right? 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And 5 minus 3 is 2. So that's it. Um, 
well, you know, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on how to factor. I'm not going to write the list of possibilities, right? Because there's only there's only several, right? And then we also have to factor the other denominator, which is x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 12x squared. Now here, the GCF is actually x squared, so we got to factor out that x squared first, leaving us with x squared plus x minus 12. Okay. Now, the x squared plus 12x minus 12 can be factored, again, as the product of two binomials. Right? x times x is x squared, so we need two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to positive 1. And again, you can write down the list if you want, but after you, you, know, you work it out, you should just get a positive 4 and a negative 3, right? Because 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and 4 minus 3 is positive 1. Okay, so those are our two denominators in their factored form, right? So now we just write down, step two, write down the LCD. So what are the factors? Well, we have x squared. We have, let's see, x plus 4. We have x plus 5. And we have x minus 3. I think that's it, right? Those are the only factors. So that's our LCD. Okay. So notice that for x squared, um, there's only one exponent, so that is the biggest exponent, the 2. And all the other exponents are just 1s. Okay, and that happens quite often. Most of the time, the exponents are just 1s. Okay, so all these exponents here are 1s. And again, you can write the 1 if you want, but it's not necessary, right? It's understood that all these exponents are 1s. So we, we usually just don't bother writing them. Okay, the one thing you have to be careful of is that some people end up multiplying x minus 3 times x minus 3 and writing x minus 3 squared. So if you do that, right, you're not adhering to the rule that you only want to pick the biggest exponent. The exponents for both of these are 1. So what's bigger, 1 or 1? I know, dumb question, right? 1 is, one is the biggest number. 1 is the biggest exponent. So this should be x minus 3 to the 1, not x minus 3 to the 2. Right? You're not adding the exponents. You're only picking the bigger exponents. And if they're the same, they're both 1s, then 1 is the biggest exponent. Okay, so going forward, if you do write this as x minus 3 squared, right, you're not getting the least common denominator anymore. You're just getting a common denominator, right? And so in that sense, you can always use a bigger exponent, right? There's nothing wrong with writing x minus 3 squared as long as you recognize it's not the least common denominator, right? So if the question is to find the least common denominator and you write it with x minus 3 squared, you're going to be marked wrong, right? Even though it is a common denominator, it's not the least common denominator, right? Because the common denominator just has to include all these factors, right? You can use as exponents as big as you want, right? You can make the exponent here a 3. You can make the exponent here a 7. You could make this uh, a 12 instead of a 2. And it'll still be a common denominator, but when you make the exponents bigger like this, you're making it a lot harder than it has to be. So in this case, all these exponents were just these invisible ones here. So yeah, so when that happens, you just write down all the factors. Okay, hope that helps. Um, let's, let's try one more. Okay, find the least common denominator for these two fractions, 2x minus 1 over 4x minus 12, and 5x over 2x squared minus 18. Okay, so again, there's just two steps, right? First step is to factor all the denominators. Uh, so let's factor the 4x minus 12, and in this case, it's just the greatest common factor is 4, so factor out the 4. This is 4 times x minus 3. Okay, and now we have to, sorry, factor, if I can spell. 
uh, 2x squared minus 18. Okay, so this one has two steps, right? You factor out the GCF, which is 2, and then you're left with x squared minus 9. Well, x squared minus 9 is the difference of two squares, right? It's a squared minus b squared. Right, a is x, b is 3, remember that. So this factors as a minus b times a plus b, or in this case, x minus 3 times x plus 3. Okay, so these are factored completely. And now, step two, we can write down the least common denominator. So we just multiply each factor using the biggest exponent. And I just realized, oops, I'm not quite done yet. I forgot that 4 is 2 squared, right? You want to write them with prime, right? 4 is not a prime number. 4 can be factored as 2 times 2, so 2 squared. Okay, now from these, we can write down the LCD. Okay, so we have the 2, of course, and again, we have a choice of ex exponents. We can, we can pick the 1 or the 2, when you're finding the least common denominator, you always pick the biggest exponent. We're going to pick the 2. Okay. And then we also have an x minus 3. And, well, that's x minus 3 to the 1 and to the 1. So we have a choice between a 1 and a 1. There really is no choice, right? You just pick the 1. And we also have the x plus 3. And that's, that's an exponent of 1, so we pick the 1. Um, to be clear, and you know, maybe I should have done this earlier. Uh, the other factor also has an x plus 3, but it's x plus 3 to the 0. So what number is bigger, 0 or 1? Right, 1 is bigger than 0, so again, we pick the 1 here. So the fact that, right, the x plus 3 to the 0 doesn't really matter in the, in the first fraction, right? It wasn't there, but the x plus 3 needs to be part of the least common denominator. Okay, so, so yeah, there's our, there's our answer. In fact, let's just write this the best possible way here. This is 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 3. And we'll leave it factored. If you multiply this out, of course, you would get, let's see, 4x squared minus 36. So you could write it that way as well, although we, we definitely prefer to leave the denominator in its factored form like this, right? And in that sense, you can even write the 4 as 2 squared, and that would be factored into its prime factors. Um, but when, when it comes to numbers, we usually resolve them and write them without exponents. But the other factors, the x minus 3 and the x plus 3, you know, definitely need to be part of the LCD. And again, whether you multiply them out or not is up to you, but I, I generally wouldn't. I, I prefer this version uh, to this version. Okay, so that's enough practice, I think, for least common denominator. You'll get plenty more practice in the homework and in the quizzes and on the practice test and, of course, on the test. Um, right. So this is one thing you have to do. Find the LCD in order to add or subtract fractions. Again, we're not adding these or subtracting them yet, right? Although, you, you know, you should know how to multiply them or divide them, but that's a, we did that in the last video. Okay, so before we can add or subtract these, right, it's not enough just to find the least common denominator. We have to do something else, right? And that's, that's the next thing we're doing. Okay, so next thing we need to do is to rewrite each denominator as the least common denominator. Okay, so first you have to find the least common denominator, and we learned how to do that. Um, you know, we'll keep doing it, so hopefully we'll, we'll get better at that. Uh, and the next thing is to multiply the numerator and denominator of each fraction by any factors in the least common denominator which are missing from the original denominator. Okay, so what does that mean, right? So let's look at an example, right? Let's rewrite each fraction so they both have the same denominator. 4, 5 over 24, and 9 over 10. Again, I'm starting simple here. Um, so we have two fractions, right? So what do we do? Well, first of all, we have to find the LCD. 
So remember how that works. We have to, well, I'll call this step A here. We have to factor the two denominators, the 24 and the 10. Right? And you do it the usual way. I like using factor trees. You could do it other ways if you want. So 24 is, you know, 3 times 8. 8 is 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we have a 3 and 3 2s, right? So 2 to the 3 times 3. And 10, of course, is just 2 times 5. So I won't bother with that. It's just 2 times 5. So that means the LCD is going to be 2 to the 3 times 3 times 5. So 8 times 3 times 5, according to my calculator, it's 120. Right? I think it's just 8 times 15. Okay, so 120. That's the least common denominator, right? This is our LCD. There we go, LCD, okay. So that's just, that's just the first step, right? Now we have to do the rewriting part. Okay, so let me go down here. We have our two fractions, five over 24 and nine over 10. Uh, let me write them this way. Okay, so we're just gonna take each fraction and rewrite them, right? And our goal is to get the denominator to be well, the LCD, in this case, 120. Okay, so how can we do that? So what do we have? We have 5 over 24, right? So the denominator now is 24, but we want it to be 120. So what are we missing, right? In other words, what number times 24 is equal to 120? Well, let's do this, right? 120 divided by 24 um, is 5, I think, right? Yeah. So we're missing a 5, right? So this question mark here, uh, I shouldn't have written it, but is a 5. So five, 5 times 24 is 120. So I'll put a 5 here as soon as I get, get this right. So the missing factor, right, the thing missing from the original denominator is the 5. So we multiply numerator and denominator by 5. Right, now we just have to multiply fractions. And by now that should be easy, right? 5 times 5 is 25. And 24 times 5 is, well, it better be 120. Okay, so there's our answer, right? There's that's the, the same fraction written with the least common denominator, the least common denominator being 120. Got it? Okay. Now let's do the same thing with 9 over 10. Right, we have 9 over 10 is what we have. Where we only have 10 in the denominator, we want 120. So again, the question is 10 times what is 120? So it should be obvious, right? It should be 12. I mean, how did I get that? I did 120 divided by 10. I just did it in my head, right? You get a 1 and a 2, so 12, right? Again, you can also just use your calculator, right? 120 divided by 10 is 12. Okay, right, so now 9 times 12, um, I shouldn't need a calculator for that, but I think I do. 9 times 12 is 108. And 10 times 12 is 120. Okay, so, right, that essentially completes our goal for now. Uh, we're going to rewrite each of these fractions. The 5 over 24, right, becomes 25 over 120. Right? And the 9 over 10 becomes 108 over 120. Right? And these are the same fraction, so we should emphasize this, that right, 5 over 24 is equal to 25 over 120, and 9 over 10 is also equal to 
108 over 120. Right? So the only, the only issue is that the, the 25 over 120 and the 108 over 120, right, these are not simplified. These are not in lowest terms. If you rewrite them in lowest terms, well, then you'll get 5 over 24 and 9 over 10, right? So, yeah, in some sense, we took the 5 over 24 and the 9 over 10, which were simplified, and we unsimplified them, right? We unsimplified them, which kind of goes against what we've been telling you to do for the last, oh, I don't know, a long time. I mean, you know, maybe the last couple couple of sections, we've said always simplify your answers, right? Simplify your fractions. And now we're telling you the opposite. Now we're telling you to unsimplify them, to write them not in lowest terms. So I know that seems a little bit weird, um, to, right, to, un, oops, to unsimplify or to write them not in lowest terms, right? But as a, right, remember our goal. Our goal is to add or subtract fractions. And if you remember anything about adding or subtracting fractions, you probably remember that the, the only way that you can add or subtract fractions is if they already have the same denominator. If they already have the same denominator, in this case 11, then it's simple. Then you just add the numerators. 7 plus 3 is 10, so we get 10 over 11. So, yeah, adding fractions is easy once you have your common denominator, your least common denominator, in this case, 11, okay? But if you wanted to add, I'm running out of space here, if you wanted to add 5 over 24 plus 9 over 10, you can't do it, right? If, if you, you know, this is a very common mistake. People add the, the 5 plus the 9 and the 24 plus 10, and if you do that, you're going to get the wrong answer every time. This is not correct, right? You do not add the numerators and denominators, right? You do that when you're multiplying, but not when you're adding. So, yeah, don't make that mistake. Don't do that, right? So, so then how do we do this, right? How do we add 5 over 24 plus 9 over 10? Well, the only way we can do this is if we change this denominator to 120 and change this denominator to 120. So that was the point of doing this, right? This is the same thing as 25 over 120 plus 108 over 120. And now that they have the same denominators, um, now you just add the numerators, right? Now you're just going to add 25 plus 108 and keep the same denominator, keep the 120, okay? So this is going to end up being some improper fraction. What is it? 133 over 120? I think that's it. And it's in lowest terms. So again, once you get this, you also should simplify it. Um, but I think this is simplified already, right? So yeah, adding these two fractions becomes a little more complicated when they don't have the same denominator. You have to get the same denominator by doing what we did up here, right? Finding the least common denominator and then multiplying by any missing factors. The 5 and the 12 were missing. And once you do that, you get the same denominator. So even though these are not in lowest terms, in some ways that's good because they have the same denominator, the 120. And that allows us to add or subtract the two fractions. Right, so that's where we're going next. Um, but before we do that, let's get more practice with just rewriting the fractions so that they have the same denominator. So, right, and that, that denominator will inevitably be the least common denominator. Okay, so here's our next example. We want to rewrite with the least common denominator. And the two fractions are x plus 5 over x squared minus 4 and 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, so step one, find the least common denominator. Okay, and again, this is something we've, we've done already. 
uh, we have two denominators, x squared minus 4. And by now, you know how to factor that as my a squared minus b squared. So x minus 2 times x plus 2. And the other denominator, x squared plus 4x plus 4, that factors as x plus 2 times x plus 2, or better yet, x plus 2 squared. Right? So that means our least common denominator has to include all the factors here. So it includes the x minus 2 and the x plus 2. But remember, we, out of the two exponents, the 1 and the 2, uh, we have to pick the bigger exponent, which is the 2. So it's x minus 2 times x plus 2 squared. Okay, so that's our least common denominator. And now comes the hard part, right? We want to multiply numerator and denominator by any factors in the LCD missing from the original denominator. Okay, so we have these two fractions here. Let's deal with the first one, the x plus 5 over x squared minus 4. But remember, we factored the x squared minus 4 as x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, so that's what we have. But here's what we want, right? What we want is this least common denominator. We want x minus 2 times x plus 2 squared. So what's missing? What are we missing here? Well, we're missing the square, right? We're missing the power of 2 on the x plus 2. That means we're missing a factor of x plus 2. If we multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2, we get x plus 2 squared. Okay? So we need to multiply numerator and denominator by x plus 2. Why numerator and denominator? Well, think about it. x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is just 1. Right? We're just multiplying by 1. And that doesn't change anything. Right? If I multiply 7 times 1, I still get 7. Right? So I'm not changing anything by multiplying by 1. I'm changing the appearance of it, right? but I'm not changing the actual number. Right? I mean, I can multiply 7 times 1, but I can, that 1 could be, you know, 3 divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So when I multiply 7 times 1, I get 21 over 3. Right? But 21 divided by 3 is still 7. Right? So, yes, I'm essentially writing it so that it's not in lowest terms anymore. That's the idea here, right? Okay, so let that sink in for a second, because I've got to erase all that. I'm going to need the space later. But that's the idea here, right? Okay, so, right, so the denominator works out. If we multiply x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2, we get x minus 2 times x plus 2 squared. What do we get in the numerator? Well, we get x plus 5 times x plus 2. And that's it. We're done. Right. And if you're thinking, but can't I cancel the x plus 2s? Well, sure, but then you're, then you're back to the original fraction again. So, again, I, I want to emphasize that this is not simplified, but that's okay. For the purpose of adding or subtracting fractions, that's going to be okay. okay so we're not going to add or subtract these fractions yet. That comes in the next section. So in the next video, we'll learn how to, how to add these or subtract them. I mean, it's very similar. All right, but hang on, we're not done yet because we have this other fraction to deal with, right? So this is going to be, oops, 3x minus 1. I'll put that in parentheses. Over x squared plus 4x plus 4. But remember, we factored that as x plus 2 squared. Okay, that's what we have. What do we want? We want the denominator to be x minus 2 times x plus 2 squared. And now the question is, what are we missing? What's here that isn't here? And it should be clear, right? We don't have an x minus 2 here. Here we do. So that's the missing factor, x minus 2. 
So that means we have to multiply again, top and bottom, numerator and denominator by x minus 2. And if we do that, the numerator, the new numerator will be 3x minus 1 times x minus 2. And that's it. That's, that's as far as we wanted to go in this problem. Okay. Again, we don't want to cancel the x minus 2s. If we do that, we're back to the beginning again. Right? We're back to our original fraction, which you know, is not going to help us add or subtract these. Let's put it that way. Okay, so yes, these are not simplified here, but that's all we wanted to do, right? Um, you know, now in the future, we may have to multiply this out, right? We may have to do, you know, multiply it out using FOIL. Um, but again, we'll do that in the, in the next video. Um, that's not something we're going to do here. Okay, and it's generally better to leave the denominator factored. We're not going to multiply out the denominator. Okay, so we're going to leave those alone. However, in the future, we may have to multiply out the numerators. Again, that's just using FOIL, right? First, outside, inside, last. All right, um, let's do one more example here. Okay, last one, try this. Rewrite with the least common denominator. The two fractions are 5 over x squared minus 4x and 3 over 3x squared minus 7x minus 20. I realize I'm using x all the time. You know, I probably should have used a different letter like y or z or w. Usually it's x, right? I find that easiest to write. All right, so again, the first step is to find the LCD here. And we have the two denominators are x squared minus 4x. And surely you know how to factor that. You just factor out an x, right? Be careful, it's not x squared minus 4. Right? It's not the difference of squares. There's an x here, so just factor out the x. Right? The other denominator is 3x squared minus 7x minus 20. How do you factor that? Right, AC method. AC method, right? So hopefully, if you did this right, you should get 3x plus 5 times x minus 4. I mean, I'm not going to go through it again because we've done it dozens of times already. This is just the AC method, and this is what you should end up with, right? Okay, so now we're factored completely. Now we need the LCD here. And so we include all the factors, including the X, right? X is a factor. So is the X minus 4 and the 3X plus 5. So that is our LCD. Okay. Next step is to take these two fractions here, the 5 over x squared minus 4x, or better yet, x minus, uh, so, sorry, x times x minus 4. And the other fraction was 3 over, let's see, x minus 4 times 3x plus 5. I hope this is not too small. And remember, our goal is to write them, I need a little more space here. Our goal is to write them with the denominator being the least common denominator. x, x minus 4, 3x plus 5, and x times x minus 4 times 3x plus 5, yeah. All right, so the first fraction we have x times x minus 4. What are we missing? We're missing the 3x plus 5. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 3x plus 5. That's our missing factor. So the numerator is just going to be 5 times 3x plus 5. You can multiply it out if you want, but I was, I was going to do that later. Um, and the other Right? The other fraction is even easier. We have x minus 4 times 3x plus 5. What are we missing? Just an x. So we need to multiply top and bottom by x. Right? So the new numerator just becomes 3x. And we're done. Right? So hopefully you got these as your answers. You know, 
if you expanded it out and multiplied out the numerator here, you know, what would you get? 15x plus 25. Um, yeah, so you could do that too. I definitely do not multiply out the denominator though. You really want to leave that alone. Um, so you could have written this this way here. Uh, right. So hopefully uh, you have the right idea here. Right. You just have to include all the factors in your LCD. Right. If you missed the x, you're not going to get the right LCD, and you're not going to be able to add or subtract these fractions then. Okay. So, so yeah, make sure you find the correct LCD. If you're missing any factors, it's not going to work. Right. You can always include more factors. Right. We could have made this x squared, or x minus four cubed. Um, but why, why bother, right? You're just making it worse, right? You want to find the least common denominator, not any higher common denominators, right? Um, okay, so that's it for this section. And then in the next section, we're going to put all this together, and then we'll be able to, you know, add or subtract these two, these two fractions here, right? And maybe we won't do this example, but we'll do a, we'll do a similar one to this, right? All right, good luck.